All right, I am going to start just a hair early, and I'm going to try to go fast because I know I'm the last talk, and everybody wants to go home before traffic gets too bad. So I'll try to go fast. Thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, show of hands, how many of you have already solved all of the badge? We've got a few. We got five, six so far. Okay. Um, I didn't think I was going to share some hints, but I'm probably going to share some hints. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about. Uh, how I came to this badge, the troubles I came through to get here, and then we'll talk about hints and solving the puzzles at the end. I'll also take my mask off, that'll probably help. Okay, so the badge itself, uh, this is a 3D mock-up in KiCad, uh, but it uses an 8-bit PIC microcontroller as the main microcontroller, which is like a really small, very not advanced chip. Um, it's the, the screen's an OLED display. It's got an IR receiver, as you've probably figured out, built-in accelerometer. And then obviously, if you've got the two potentiometers as your um, major form of input. And then like it says there, uh, Jade, can you stand up? I'm going to make you stand up. This is my daughter who drew the snowman, that you, the snowman, snowboarder that you see on the board. And she's also did the mountains that are on your lanyard. So she did the art there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not artistic, so I pulled her in for that. Um, but um, I designed this around an 8-bit pick, mainly because that's all that was available. Um, so here, for example, is the chip that we used on the 2019 B-Sides badge. Um, this is from Mouser. You can see here the, the lead time is 52 weeks. So if I ordered some a year from now, I would get some back. Um, also, I could only order at maximum 75. That's all they'll let me have in one year from now. That's crazy. Also, the price of that chip for one is $6.36. When we bought this in 2019, it was $1.20. So that's how crazy the chip shortage really is. The chip used in the 2021, it's a little bit better. Its price is up to $5. It was $1 when we bought it. But it and it is only 46, 45 weeks, so that's only nine months. And then the, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm going, I guess I missed a year. That was the 2021. The 2021, um, there is none available, and the expected time is in September of next year when they expect to get 3,000 in, which will, I'm sure, disappear as soon as they get them in. So it's just crazy to see how hard, oh, no, this is my current chip. Sorry, that's right. This is my current chip. It's no longer available. Um, when I went on their site, they had like 500. I was like, great, I'm going to use that chip. They have some. It's not too expensive. It's only a dollar. Um, so I'm going to go with this chip because that's kind of the budget range we had. It is a whole lot less capable compared to the previous two years' chips, but that's the price point we were stuck at. Um, this meme came up on a badge chat. There's a channel for those people that make badges, and this meme really hit home last night when it, when it come up. Oh, and it's not even on the full screen. But... Um, yeah, basically, oh, this one's off. Look at that screen. OK. But that chip itself, like I said, is a low, very low power, very low capability chip. It has 16K of space. That's all it has, 16K words, um, which is a little bit bigger than a byte. But it's still, it's, it's almost like 28 bytes, but you can't individually access each byte. So that's how much space you have for all of the, the puzzles and everything that does is 16K, right? Like, that's not even a, a you know, one and a quarter floppy inch drive, like that, that has more space than that. And then 2K of RAM, um, there's 256 bytes of EEPROM, but that's nothing big. Um, but it uses very, very low power. At full speed, it's using 1.1 milliamps. So that's the nice thing. Um, you can, that it should last for days on that one little coin cell. And you'll notice, like, if you, if you don't use your badge, it turns off all the lights and it goes to sleep until you bump it or shake it, and then it'll turn the lights back on. So it should, it should be pretty, pretty low power. Um, I ended up buying the automotive edition because that's all they had left when it came time to buy it. Um, the top version is the prototype, like the same chip, there's just different footprints. The top one is one that I plugged in on a breadboard to do my initial testing. And then when I was finally ordered, ready to order, I ordered the bottom ones, but the, my supplier ran out of the bottom ones in the two weeks it took me to do prototype between being ready. And so I was like, oh crap, where do I go? I started looking at other suppliers, and Arrow had them, but they had the automotive edition, which really just makes the badge work, the chip work in higher and lower temperature ranges. But I was like, I don't care. It's, you've got the chip I need. I'm just going to buy it. So here's my iteration process from design concept to the final badge. Um, the top 
left image is my first initial design. It's got two little breadboards, and I shouldn't have used a black breadboard because you can't even see the chip on the black breadboard. But that main chip's on there, and then you can see the LED, um, my, my IR sensors, and then my two pots are on the blue board. And I just kind of breadboarded it out, like, okay, can, can this chip do what I want to do, right? Like, can I receive IR messages? Can I send messages? Can I write to that screen fast enough for the display so it doesn't look clunky, et cetera, et cetera? And then once that's done, then I designed a prototype board, and then I would solder all the pieces on that prototype board. Well, I totally messed up on my prototype board. This is my, I usually use, I, in the past, I'd used Eagle CAD to design the board, and everybody's like, oh, all the board, the, the bads, the pros are like, oh, we've all gone to KiCad, it's so much better. It's like, okay, I'll use KiCad. And it kind of bit me, because I just didn't know what I was doing as well. I put the footprint for my chip on the board, but then I had the pin assignment all wrong. So when I want, when I went to use it, I couldn't use, I couldn't put my chip down there because the pin layout didn't match. So I had to like have all these jumper wires over to that breadboard where I put the chip there. And so that's what that mess is down on the bottom left. Is that that's my prototype, but I had to have this additional breadboard to fix my mistake when I designed the prototype. So uh, that meant I needed to do another prototype because I didn't feel comfortable. Like I wanted, I didn't feel comfortable designing 200 of these based on that mess. Is my, you know, like oh, this is close enough. I'm just gonna go ahead and make the assumption it'll all work. So that board on the right is my last prototype that I did. I don't show you the backside, but it, it, I think in a different slide I will. It's pretty close to what you guys had. It just doesn't have the logo because we didn't have the logo at that time. And then the, you got the final badge. So um, other issues I ran into, this, that chip has the temperature sensor in it, which I wanted to play with. Uh, my initial prototype says, okay, I got a temperature sensor, I can tell the temperature, it works. Um, but if you read this um, fine print in their documentation, it will produce a temperature rain that is within 100 degrees of the actual temperature. <laughs> it's like, that's not a temperature sensor, that's like a random number generator, you know? Like, that's useless. So I spent a long time like putting my device in very cold and very hot and like trying to like map out, okay, how does this adjust to those temperature ranges? And I came up with this algorithm that worked really good on my prototype boards and then I started flashing all the boards you have and found out the boards are all over the place. And I'm sure you guys have seen that, right? Like, as you look at your temperature, some of them are like, oh, it's 20 degrees in here. And others, it's like, it's 90 degrees in here. Those, that, yeah, that's that fine print right there. They, that's not a temperature sensor, guys. I'm sorry. I should have, uh, I guess I missed that, and it ended up biting me. So um, some of you guys, for that chill, the chill puzzle, right, you're supposed to chill that temperature sensor. Some of the boards are going to want a colder temperature than others because they think that it's a lot hotter in the room than it is. Some of you get that puzzle for free because they decided it's freezing in here. Uh, <laughs> best, uh, it's one of those bugs that uh, I guess, um, I don't know, it, that's not a temperature sensor. That's my, that's my claim here. Um, so also, programming the chip, I told you it's only 60, 16K. Um, I am using almost every little bit of that. You see here on that image on the very right, there are 48 bytes free. Like, that's all there is. And that is after I did optimis like compile time optimizations for size, and I did um, release build, and I went around and did micro optimizations. So down at the bottom, you see my, on the left, I have a for loop with an int. If I changed that for loop to use a uint, that was 10 extra bytes for each for loop I changed. So I went through the whole code base and bought myself 200 more bytes so that I could get like one of those last puzzles in. Um, the, as, uh, there was so much, there wasn't so much, but there were some things more I wanted to fix. Some of you are able to solve the logic analyzer puzzle by just haphazardly going through it. That's because the solution to that is actually, um, how should, how do I wanna say this without ruining it? You, it's a key combo that you can accidentally get right. I wanted to make that more difficult, but coding that pushed me way over the boundary line. And so there was, there was just corners I had to cut and that was one of them. Um, it really was just as much as I could push that, like I tried squeezing as much in there. I, I trade off some things like, oh, this can only take this much bytes. Uh, and so for example, right, like we got 16K. An image of 128 by 64 using one bit per pixel is still 1K. And there's what, 15, 16 screens? 
just the image for each screen would be 16K bytes, right? So that's, that's how constrained this little chip made things. And then there was other issues. Um, my prototype boards I had designed, so this one on the left, that small chip was my LED controller, but when it came time for the final production run, they were out. So without testing it, I, ordered, we just, I changed the design to use that bigger chip as the LED controller and prayed it would work. Uh, luckily it did, <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't have badges. Uh, just crazy, crazy things like that. Um, but I have to give a big shout out to CompuKid Mike. Is he here? He might have went home. He had his kids around with him. I don't see CompuKid Mike. Okay, he did so much for us. He did the assembly of these badges. Um, we didn't have enough time to have China do it, so, or the shop in China do it. Let's see if this will play. No, it won't. Oh, 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 will. I just, okay. Let's see if I can make this play. So here's his, this is his little pick and place machine. And you can see it grabbing each of the parts, puts them over a light to see how it's holding them, and then it places them in the right spot on the board. And it's, it was so, kind of cool to see. Um, what you don't see here is the painstaking process it takes to feed each of those device, like hook it up and then program it to say, well, this chip goes right here, right? Like it's supposed to be kind of automated, but it's not as automated as, as you would think. Um, so he did a lot for us. And that's him in the top left putting, so we've got like a stencil, you, you apply the, the solder paste as a stencil, and then the, that machine sets the machine, the parts on that paste, and then he's got this like big pizza oven that you just put the boards in, and then it cooks the solder paste into solder, and that was it. It was really cool to see, never wanted to do it again. And that would only do the small pieces. It doesn't do any of the through hole, and it couldn't do the LCD screen because that screen can't go through an oven. So that was all child labor. Uh, these are my boys doing the soldering of all of your uh, rotary controllers, and then I soldered the LCD screens on the back. So like you guys know, there are uh, 15 puzzles. I try to get a variety of things and variety of difficulties. Sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't. Um, wow, I've, I've ripped through this, awesome. Um, this is kind of where I wanted to talk, puzzles, the hints, and errata. So few things, I'll, I'll come back to this slide, few things I wanted to point out before, but I've made these mentioned on the Slack. Um, on the lanyards, I made a mistake when I was designing them. That's over there, that's what the right thing is supposed to be, but somehow when I was laying them out, one of those X's floated down to the next row which changed the answers, which makes it insolvable. So on your lanyards, those first two lines are like crossed out in purple, that's why. If you actually had, if you tried to solve it using those, you would be in, inconclusive, right, unsolvable. That's the, the real one. You don't need those two, you can actually solve it with just the bottom, how many there are, but it's easier if you have the other two. If you're doing it by hand, it's easier. Like this is like a mastermind game with insane number of options, a little bit more difficult, but still doable, right? I kind of like these puzzles because they're very um, procedural. Um, unfortunately, procedural puzzles, computers can do even better the weekend, but. And then the hint on the matrix one is that I didn't misspell that. I know how to spell Bunny Hill, but um, they, I needed to do, produce a three by three matrix with a correct determinant and having two ends there would not produce a determinant that would decode. So that's kind of a hint on that one. Um, but yeah, with that, that's really all I had. I kind of go I went a little faster than I expected, but I wanted to leave some time also for questions or help, hints, errata, other errata. Or I don't even know how to say that. Sorry, I'll quit saying it. Anybody have anything they want to ask? Oh yes, I can't see your hands, so just talk loud. Uh, so how do you solve every one of them? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I can help on some of them. The snow one was a little bit more difficult than I expected. Um, anybody who wants the snow one, Jade, will you stand up again? She has a TV remote control. That's really all you need is a power button from most common TV remotes. If it will detect a TV on off and that's how you kill the power, the, the snow one. So that one's a freebie. Um, the chill, we kind of talked about a little bit. Equalizer, I'm not gonna give away. It has to do with that mastermind puzzle. The social, I think you guys know pretty much. Pong, um, you have to play it and you have to be pretty good at it. <laughs> um, that one's about all that one takes. The ski game, you just have to be pretty good at. The ski lifts, you have to do the soldering on the back. Egg Hunter. Um, Google it. Yeah, Google it. 
Okay, Google, Google 800, you might be able to figure that one out pretty straightforward, thank you. Captain Crunch, I think most people got that one. They know, tr they know the hacker trivia. Uh, Tower Station, some of you have got that one. What's a good hint for Tower Station without giving it away? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, it has to do with the tree puzzle on the back. The two leads that are slightly higher than the rest, those are the decimal part. So it's like a number, decimal, those two leads higher on the left. Um, what are we on? Oh, the hit the slopes. That one um, is modeled after some of the GCHQ mind teaser puzzles. That's not one of my strong spots. So it's hard for me to gauge, like, is this too hard, too easy? But apparently, for those that get it, it's like, totally out there, and then all of a sudden, oh, oh yeah, that's easy. Um, you can correct me if you're wrong. It's kind of one of those, like once you get it, you just know you got it. Not really a big fan of those, but I kind of want to do some things that, that are not just my area of expertise. Somebody say something? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Wilson was telling me, he was like, I was just staring at it, and all of a sudden it was like, ding. Um, Let's see, where are we at? Matrix, Matrix is an encryption one. It is kind of hard, but it's, it's, once you get the right path, you should get there. There's a few people here who know that one. You can ask around on the Slack channel and people will help. Uh, logic Analyzer, that one turned out to be rougher than I intended. Uh, those do represent ones and zeros, um, but it's like the spacing of each one. It could be, so like in that image, that's like, I would guess here, that's like two ones right next to each other, then a zero, then a one, then a zero, then you know some number of ones. And then that's just gonna be some ASCII code. The hard part is, when there's lots of zeros next to each other, that's just a long, you know, low time, and it's, is that four or five dot, you know, low, low periods. So determining the low periods and the high periods there is how you would solve the logic analyzer. That one's modeled off of actual, when you're like doing hardware attacks, you can put traces on lines and you can see the voltage go up and down and you're trying to decode like, you know, is this I2C or whatever. I didn't want to make you do protocol, so I tried to do raw ASCII, it still turned out to be too hard. So like, like the idea and th concept, but, execution was poor. RTFM, that one I've seen some trouble with. U3 is a reference to the part on the back of your badge. So if you'll look on the back of your badge, there's a part labeled U3, it's talking about that part. That might help you. And then the etch sketch a lot of people got that by um, accident. That one is just an etch sketch If you know how to use an etch sketch you'll get that badge, that you'll get that one. Um, do you any, does anybody want additional hints or additional questions or feedback? I'm open to anything right now. Yes, a hand up. Okay, you can't get the equalizer. The equalizer is hard to input, but you have to know exactly what to input, which comes from the mastermind puzzle. Um, any other questions, feedback? Did you like the badge? Was it worth the time? Was it worth it? Thank you. Um, yeah, if you, if you don't want to, I, I, I'm really open to criticism and, and you know, be like, if you want to just shoot me over Slack and be like, that puzzle really wasn't good, don't do another one like that, or I kind of think the jump between this hint and that was too far, please let me know so that I can improve for next year. I, my intent is not to frustrate people. Um, <laughs> okay. I, depends on when next year is, right? We've already had that concession. Um, okay, anything else? Otherwise, I won't belay it and let you guys go home. All right, Th thank you guys for sticking around. I appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you tomorrow. I don't think that's the closing talk, so that's it. See you guys, thank you.